parallel and perpendicular lines. We're going to graph these first two lines, noticing that they have the same slope, and see how they turn out. We start by noticing that the slope is 3 over 1, or negative 3 over negative 1, and the y-intercept is 2. So, starting with the y-intercept, it's 2. The slope is up 3 to the right 1, or down 3 to the left 1. And we graph those and get a perfect line. Now we're going to graph the one below it. Its slope is also 3 over 1, or negative 3 over negative 1. Its y-intercept is negative 3. So we start with the y-intercept, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And the slope is up 3 to the right 1, up 3 to the right 1, or down 3 to the left 1. And those lines are parallel. Noticing that the lines did have the same slope, how did that make the lines parallel? Well, if we pick any point on this line, you notice the slope, line goes up 1, up 3 to the right 1, while this line does exactly the same thing. But since they start at different places and do the same thing, they run in parallel. To verify this one more time, let's take a look at the second pair of lines. Here we have m equals negative 2 over 3, or 2 over negative 3. The y-intercept b is 4. So starting at the y-intercept, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, and the slope is negative 2 to the right 3, negative 2 to the right 3, or up 2 to the left 3. Of course, the red lines are going to have different slopes than the blue lines, so they won't be parallel. m equals negative 2 over 3, or 2 over negative 3. The y-intercept b equals negative 1. Starting at y-intercept, which is negative 1, we go down 2 to the right 3, down 2 to the right 3, or up 2 to the left 3 up 2 to the left 3. And once again, we have two lines that are parallel. And they're parallel because the slopes are the same. Now let's consider these lines. This we have m equals 3 over 1, or negative 3 over negative 1. The y-intercept is 2. We can graph this line fairly easily, considering that we just did. Start with the y-intercept, which is 2. The slope is up 3 to the right 1, or down 3 to the left 1. Now the second line, its slope is negative 1 over 3, or 1 over negative 3, and its y-intercept is negative 3. So we start graphing the y-intercept, then we go down 1 to the right 3, down 1 to the right 3, or we go up 1 to the left 3, up 1 to the left 3. I did something wrong here. Up, oh, I went down two on that. And those lines certainly look perpendicular. Among the easiest ways to check and see is to use an ordinary piece of notebook paper because the corners are 90 degree angles. And what do we see? Those are perpendicular. It's the slopes that cause that, 
you notice the slope is 3 over 1 and negative 1 third. They are negative reciprocals of each other. And if that's the case, the lines will be perpendicular, as we can see. Just to verify that, though, let's do a couple of other lines here where the slopes are also negative reciprocals of each other. Here we have m equals negative 2 over 3 or 2 over negative 3. The y-intercept is 4. So to graph that, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the slope is down 2 to the right 3, down 2 to the right 3, or up 2 to the left 3. Nice straight line there. Here we have the last of the lines. The slope is 3 over 2, or that's the same as negative 3 over negative 2. And the y-intercept, in this case, is negative 1. To graph the line, we go to the y-intercept. Guess you can't see that. Negative 1. We go to negative 1. And then we go up 1, 2, 3 over 2, up 1, 2, 3, over 2. Or we could go down 3, backwards 2. We get a nice straight line, as we should. Now let's take a look at those red lines using our 90 degree angle. And what do we see? We see that, likewise, when the slopes are negative reciprocals of each other, we get perpendicular lines. So, negative 2 thirds, positive 3 over 2, those slopes being negative reciprocals, will give you perpendicular lines.